I'm Anthony from The Basement Reef, and welcome once again to our channel. If this is your first time tuning in, we're a retail aquatic pet store and houseplant shop located in Columbia, Missouri. And this is the channel where we share all sorts of things related to the aquatic side of our business. Today, we're here to talk about this fish tank and do a little bit of work on it because it certainly needs it. But before we get started, I absolutely could not begin another video without mentioning the unfortunate passing of Jake Adams, managing editor of ReefBuilders.com. Now, if you're familiar with Jake's work, it doesn't need to explain to you. If you're unfamiliar with Jake's work, it's more than you could ever explain in even one video here on YouTube. But in my mind, he was the greatest ambassador that our hobby had today. And him not being around anymore is a massive loss to everybody that knew him and to our hobby especially. Uh, no one person is ever going to be able to fill in what Jake was in this hobby, what he did in this hobby, uh, but he has always inspired me and certainly now that he's gone, is inspiring me to do a little bit better about sharing my enthusiasm for this hobby with everybody. And I truly believe that if we all do that uh, collectively, it might fill some of the void left in the hobby by the absence of Jake Adams. Uh, certainly uh, for people that knew him, nothing's ever going to replace him. Uh, but as far as his impact on the hobby, I think that if we all strive to emulate Jake and emulate what Jake was doing, the hobby will be way better off for it. So I'm certainly going to be doing that, uh, starting with today's video, putting my all into it and trying to make it the best quality video that I can. Uh, make this fish tank better than it is now because it's been ignored a little bit and it certainly doesn't deserve that. Uh, and show you guys what I've been up to. So this aquarium is a 90 gallon mixed reef right in the front of our store. And at times it's looked really good and at times it's had some setbacks and lately it's been more setbacks than good. So today I'm finally gonna make all of that right and give this tank everything that it's been needing. Before we get to that though, I'll give you a little bit of a tour of what's going on in here. The most recent issue that's really set this tank back within the past couple of days is that the main source of flow in the tank this gyre pump here has actually more or less stopped flowing and cut off almost all the flow to the tank. And that has these corals incredibly unhappy. Uh, I'm sure the fish don't have as much oxygen as they would like. So we need to either clean this up and get it working again or fully replace it because flow is very important for a reef tank. And the fact that this tank has no source of flow besides the return pump right now is a huge problem that we need to address. Not everything has been bad in here though. We have a few corals that are doing pretty well despite everything. This Worldwide Corals Watermelon Chalice here is growing like crazy. It doesn't seem to be too upset with the current situation, but it'll certainly be happy once we fix it. This torch doesn't like the lack of flow, but it's been chugging along for a long time, and we've actually grown and fragged this several times over. It's a single or double head right now, because I actually just fragged it and sold all the frags just a few weeks back. So it's regrowing until we repeat that process. We have a little Montipora that's starting to get some nice shelving growth here. A few scroll corals, Garf Bonsai, super classic Acropora. Now, none of this stuff is as happy as it could be, and that's what we're here to fix today. Here we have a frog spawn and a Duncan that have both fallen off of their rock, and they stung each other in the process, and so they have some dead heads. We'll be pulling these out and cleaning them up, uh, running them through the band saw to break them down into more attractive, more manageable colonies get that dead growth off of there. Uh, as far as fish, uh, this is actually one of my favorite tanks I've ever had as far as the fish mix. We have several nice, large, mature fish in here that all get along, all leave the corals alone, and I really enjoy them. Uh, there's a large mated pair of Clark Eye Clowns. These guys actually lay eggs all of the time. Uh, someday I may actually decide to raise some up. We'll see about that, and if I do, it'll certainly be featured here on the channel. We have a large, mature Scopus Tang. There is a spotted hawkfish who loves to perch in the UFO scroll coral here. Uh, there's coral beauty somewhere, a few blinnies, a mandarin, just a really nice mix of fish. And they're all pretty happy with this tank. Uh, we'll just get it cleaned up for them and make them even happier with it. All right, so off camera, I took a look at that gyre pump and took it apart and tried to get it clean. But what I discovered is that it's actually mechanically broken. So unfortunately that pump was not gonna work out for this tank. So I replaced it with two small DC wave makers that I have lying around. 
one over here on the side to kind of push the water this way, and then one in this back corner behind the overflow, because that's sort of a dead spot in the tank uh, with the design of that overflow. Uh, already, just by doing that and cleaning the glass, I feel way, way better about this tank. And that brings me to something that I love to preach about this hobby, but I'm as guilty of as anyone. And that's that it's a really, really easy hobby to get discouraged in. Uh, when the tank starts looking bad or things aren't going as well as you want, uh, a lot of times the impulse is to do less with it because you're not feeling good about it. And that's really the opposite of what you need to do, what the tank needs. Uh, and a lot of times I find that just getting my hands wet and doing the smallest piece of maintenance uh, brings me immediately to the conclusion that things aren't as bad as they thought they were and that the tank appreciates it when I do anything at all for it and that it's really just a series of small adjustments to get everything going back good again. Uh, really just within a couple of minutes of replacing that flow in here and getting the environment just a little bit back to how it should be. Uh, the corals are looking better and everything. Uh, so I'm encouraged and I'm excited to continue going on this tank now, whereas at first this felt like a big task that I was not looking forward to. Uh, just kind of funny how that changes the moment that you get your hands wet. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is a water change. Everything actually tested out fine in here, but I'm going to change out about 30% of the water just to be on the safe side. There are plenty of trace elements and things of that nature that I'm unable to test for. And I think that the only reason the calcium is so good and all of that is because these corals haven't been growing as fast as they should lately. And if I do everything right, uh, they're going to be growing, they're going to need that calcium, and they're going to need those trace elements that I can't test for. Just to be on the safe side, water change. First though, I'm going to go in there and with a soft brush just kind of mechanically scrub at some of those rocks because uh, there's just some, some crud growing on it. Not identifiable algae or anything, but just some tufts of detritus and it's unattractive and I think that scrubbing it off of there is going to go a long way to get this tank looking good after the water change. All right, now that the water change is all done with, we also took care of a couple of other boring chores like cleaning up the protein skimmer and changing out the filter sound. We've let things sit overnight. And it's the next day and I'm back here at the shop and things are looking immensely better than they were yesterday. A uh, better polyp extension on every coral. The fish don't look all stretched and stuff like they did before we addressed any of this. And I'm overall really excited about it. Now it's time to really dig our hands in and get to the fun stuff. And that is cleaning up these coral colonies, uh, gluing things back down to look more attractive, and adding some more corals to the tank. Uh, it's a little bit counterintuitive. A lot of times I think that when things aren't going well with the tank, people don't want to add anything new to it. And I certainly wouldn't add anything to a tank if you aren't aware what the tank's problems are. But if it's a situation like this where you know that the bones of the tank are good, there's no water chemistry issue, a lot of times adding some new livestock to the tank is just the kick in the butt that you need to really stay excited about the tank moving forward. So I have a few corals in mind for this already that I'm excited to share with you guys. We'll get them all glued down, show you that whole process, show you how we clean up these corals down here that have some dead parts on them, and then let things sit for one more night, show you the final results, and see how much better this tank looks than when we started. We have a few corals to address here on the sand bed. The Duncan and the frog spawn, like I talked about at the beginning of the video. Then there's also some dead heads on this Blastomusa back here, and a few random LPS that could definitely use some cleaning up with the bandsaw. And then the other coral that could use some attention is this guy right here. Uh, this is one of my favorite corals. It's in very sorry shape at the moment, but this is a branching turbinaria. Uh, exact species is unknown, but in keeping with the theme of this video being a bit of a tribute to Jake Adams, this is a coral that was featured on Reef Builders. Uh, it didn't come from him, he just wrote about it and that's what alerted me to the fact that this coral existed in the hobby and that a wholesaler had gotten some in and I jumped at the chance to get it. Uh, it had been doing well for me for some time, but ever since the flow diminished in here has taken a turn for the worse. 
Uh, I wasn't sure how this branching growth form was going to keep up in captivity, so I had always been hesitant to cut it. But now that we have some dead spaces between these main branches, I'm definitely gonna be running this through the saw and cleaning it up and putting it in a few different places across the reef so we can see if we can't figure out exactly what it likes and get this awesome, unique coral growing again. The first coral that we're gonna be cleaning up today is the Duncan coral, because that's gonna be really easy. After that, we'll move on to the frog spawn and then we'll just do the same for the rest of those corals that I talked about. Now with those corals all cut up, we can finally move on to the fun part, gluing these guys down in the tank and getting things looking really pretty again. So I'm just using some just regular gel style reef glue here. That's what I find works best for most circumstances. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of very many of those two-part epoxies or anything like that, but if anyone knows of a good one or a better way to be gluing these corals down, uh, by all means, let me know. Start with the frog spawn here. Cut a couple single heads off of that that will probably just sell. And then one nice chunk here that I'm gonna keep for the tank. Same for the Duncan corals. I'm just gonna be putting a small bit of them in here and we'll grow them back out. And the final thing to glue down is going to be the pieces of that branching turbinaria. As I said, we're gonna put that in a few places because I've never been super happy with how it's growing and especially now that it's having troubles, uh, we want to even our odds here a bit and give ourselves the best chance of it working in at least one of the places that we put it. So I got three reasonable sized pieces off of it and we're going to put it in three different places today and see how it goes. Okay, now with that done, I'm gonna show you guys the other corals that I have in mind for this tank. Get those glued in. We'll get this tank one more day and take a look at what we've done. These first few corals that I picked out all come from Tampico Coral Farms. That's a greenhouse out in Oregon, ran by a good friend of mine in the industry, Kyle Weppel. And I actually learned about Tampico through a Jake Adams video on Reef Builders. So it all comes full circle again here. This first one is a really cool Montipora called Barney the Dinosaur, and it's an original release from Tampico. It grows mostly purple, but can grow pink too, and the polyps in my tank are blue, but in Kyle's tank, they're bright green. So we aren't really sure what makes this one tick, but it's a really cool coral regardless. Next up is our second of three Montiporas from Kyle. This one's not a Tampico original, but rather a staple in the hobby, and it's called the Grinch. I love how bright it is, and as long as I've had this coral, which is several months now, it's only gotten brighter and brighter as it goes. I can't wait to see what happens when we get it out of the frag system and into this display tank. Our final Monty, similar to the Grinch, isn't a Tampico Coral Farms original, but has also been around forever, and it's called the Grimace. It's kind of hard to even explain the colors of this guy, and he looks different under different lighting conditions, and the new growth looks really different from the old growth, so it's another really fun Monty as well. 
This one is a Cyphastria called Oregon Twilight. And Kyle's been growing this one out, I think he said for close to 15 or 20 years now, something along those lines. And has shipped over a thousand frags of it. And it's always been one of my absolute favorite corals of his. And for our final Tampico Coral Farms coral, we actually need to retrieve it out of our soft coral tank here. It's a really cool zoanthid, another original release from Kyle called Acid Drops, but it's been completely overgrown by our pulsing Xenia. So this tank will be a much, much better home for it. I'm sorry that you can't see what it looks like now, but once everything's all settled in in the new tank, I'll show you because they are awesome. And for our final two corals, we'll go with two complete mystery Acroporos here. These are just unnamed, probably maricultured pieces, kind of a smooth skinned deep water variety here, and then a bright green one. Who knows what they'll color into, but we don't have enough Acroporos in here, so it'll be really cool to see what they grow into and get some more Acroporos in this tank. Back at the tank now, and the first ones that we're going to do are our two mystery Acroporos. And we're gonna put those over by the Garp Bonsai and create an Acropora section of our reef. Uh, I personally just like to group things. So I'm gonna make a little Acropora section and then over here focus on a Montipora section. Again, gel style super glue and I personally go crazy with it. A lot of times if I have a coral die, I don't always take it out of the tank. Uh, I'll leave the frag plug on there because that's a nice flat surface to mount another coral. Makes it a lot easier than just gluing it onto the rocks if you've already done that work once before. Next up, we have the first two of our Tampico Coral Farms corals. That being the Oregon Twilight Cypastria and the Acid Drop Zoantids. They both like a little bit less light than these Acroporas do. So I'm gonna aim for the bottom half of the tank with them. I think that this rock down here would look really nice with the Oregon Twilight encrusting over it. So I'm just gonna aim for that. As for the acid drops, Nice little shelf for a coral right here. We'll finish up with our three Montiporos from Tampico Coral Farms, and then we'll be all set, and this tank will have a whole new life. Here we are with our three Montis. Now, I'm not a fan of frag plugs that have an actual plug on them. It works great for displaying coral on frag racks. As far as actually placing them, I don't love it. So I usually take bone cutters to that end of it to get a nice flat surface for gluing. Now certainly if you have a hole in one of your rocks to jam these into, these are great. The rocks I use for this aquascape just don't have large holes like that. First up is the Grimace. We'll just throw him on top of this skeleton here from a digicata that I used to have in here before a few of our SPS colonies crashed. Now Barney the Dinosaur. Honestly, one of my favorite frags that Kyle over at Tampico Coral Farms has released. Uh, he grows a lot of really popular named stuff in the hobby, a lot of weird old school stuff, uh, but then also some oddballs that uh, he aquacultures himself and is pretty much responsible for bringing into the hobby, such as Barney the Dinosaur and the Acid Drop Zoanthids. And for our final coral, the Grinch Montiflora. He might look nice on the side of this rock here. I 
And with that, we're all set. This tank has a whole new lease on life. I'm really excited about it. These new corals are gonna keep me excited about it. And we'll give it one night for everything to settle in. Show you what this stuff looks like once the corals that we glued down and cut up are happy again. And then in a couple of months, I'll give you guys an update on the growth and we'll see whether or not this has been successful. All right, so now we've let things sit for one more night and I'm ready to show you guys what it all looks like after we've done a couple of days of work on this tank. Honestly, I'm really excited with it. It's not perfect, but it's so much cleaner than it was. Everything is so much happier and I can see a cool future for this tank when everything has a chance to grow out. I'm gonna do my very best to take really good care of this tank from now on and especially over the next handful of weeks and months so that around December or so I can film a really nice update video for you guys. Uh, this ended up being a really fun video for me to make, a really therapeutic video to make in a ton of ways. Uh, so hopefully you guys liked everything that you saw in it today. Uh, if you want to subscribe to our channel that would help us out a lot. That's actually the number one thing that anybody can do right now to help us to grow this channel and produce more videos like this and better videos than this. So we definitely appreciate it. Now, before we get out of here, we'll cut to some detailed shots of all of these corals now that they're looking nice and happy.